Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Anil from Wood Woodwork. Um, today, we're working on a project. You've probably seen it on our page before if you follow us on Instagram, but we're working on a slat wall. So a client uh, reached out to us inquiring about doing a custom slat wall in their bedroom. So we took on the project. Um, um, it's about a 13 foot wall. She wanted the back of the wall to be painted black and then a natural tone for the wood to match our floor. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the process, how we go about doing the installation, how we go about the prep work and all of that there. So stick around, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment of your thoughts of this, uh, this project and let's get to it. All right, so now we're sitting here in my office. I'm Aki. Um, and basically we're gonna do some math real quick just to understand how many pieces we need. So the wall is 13 feet across, linear foot across, but we're gonna round that up to 14 feet. That way we have an additional few pieces instead of ex an exact amount. So the spacing is gonna be one and a quarter and each piece is one and a half inches. So we're gonna do one and a half plus 1.25 for one and a quarter. So I guess it's 2.75 inches. And that's a slat and a space, right? That's the number that it equals out to a slat and a space. So knowing that number, we're gonna keep that number in mind. So we're gonna take 14 feet times 12 because there's 12 inches in a foot. That gives us 168. And then we're gonna divide that by 2.75 and that gives us 61.09. So we're gonna round that up to 62 pieces of wood trim that we're gonna need for the wall. Reason why I use 14 instead of 13 is because first we quote the client um, an additional 30% of material costs. That way, if there's any mishaps that we need to replace, we can do that along the way. Um, we have the, the budget to, to take care of that. And then also for situations like this where you know, I don't want to have an exact amount. I'd rather have a little bit extra so that, you know, if let's say we do use the exact amount and then we're missing like one or two pieces. Now we have to go buy wood, plan the wood, stain the wood, put the polyurethane on the wood. And then that process is going to take like an extra couple of days. So I'd rather have more, get the job done once. And then all the extra pieces, just they're laying at the shop and I could use them for whatever we want to use them for. Alrighty, so we're in the tundra. Got my coffee. Most important part, seatbelt. Safety first, you guys. Looks like I gotta get some, uh, I get the oils changed. I'm like 50 miles over my uh, service. Yeah, so let's get going. So guess where we're at, guys? Yeah. Lowe's, I love this place. Grade A customer service. People are always knowledgeable. They're always willing to help you. You know, I mean, prices are comparable to Home Depot, right? All the tools you need, the lumber you need, it's all quality over here. So let's go ahead and jump up in there. Let's go pick up what we need and get going. <laughs> I can't whistle. 62 pieces of these slats. I'm gonna show you guys how I pick my wood because this is a lot of wood to be finding bowed wood or wood that's splinting and things of that nature. So when we get back to the shop, I'm gonna show you guys how we chose all this wood. Although Lowe's is my go-to store, right? Um, their pieces of select pine were just very bowed. So I wasn't able to purchase those. That would have been way too much to work with while on the job site. So. I had a swing over here to Home Depot, pick up some wood. They had a bunch of the wood that I was looking for and it was fresh pieces too. So I went ahead and grabbed those. It's about 62 pieces. I don't know if you can see in there. Nah, you can't see in there. But yeah, 62 pieces in the trunk right now. So we're heading back to the shop now to plane the pieces down to their um, thickness that they need to be, which is 10 16 Most of these pieces are three quarter inches. So I have to basically plane off two sixteenths of an inch off of each piece. Um, and then for the corner pieces, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that I do to get, you know, tight fits in the corners of the walls. Cause we all know no wall is squared. So we're gonna head back to the shop and get started, baby. Always gotta have 
your apron on to keep yourself clean and dust free, right? Safety goggles to protect these bad boys. All right, let's 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 work, baby. Quick tip: if you're ever in a shop or if you ever have the option to build like a work a workshop desk or workbench, I highly recommend having some type of casters on your uh, bench. That way it's just so much easier for you to be able to like haul around 60, 70 pieces of lumber, you know, some real heavy duty stuff. Like this stuff right here, like I've tested it out. I stood on it, had Sam stand on it too to see if it could hold up like 500 pounds. It's good, it could probably hold like a thousand. Um, but I highly recommend putting casters. And what I mean by casters is just little wheels, little wheels at the base right uh, where we at wheels here wheels there just just so that you know you can move around the shop easily without having to like haul material from your car to a certain station um it just works i had two of them as you can see depending on what we're working on in the shop you know we could be doing some over here and then doing some over there and then not be in each other's ways um so it just works out well for us So this process is gonna take a long time. What we're gonna do is, when it cuts the next scene, I'm gonna finish up planing all of these to 10 sixteenths of an inch. And then we're gonna bring it over to the table saw and I'm gonna cut those beveled edges that I mentioned before um, in the piece itself. I will still be here pulling off stickers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's up you guys? Hopefully you guys can see me okay. But so with this step here, what we're doing is we're on a table saw right now. And um, on the edges of all of our designs, all of our accent walls, what we like to do is we like to cut a bevel right at that edge. And the reason being is because at the back, farthest back corner of the wall, it's never square. Sometimes it's like a little wobbly. It's just drywall, the way that they finish the drywall. So to eliminate that spacing that you get from pushing a piece of wood up against that back wall. So just think of it like it's an angle, right? So it's, this is exaggerated, like the angle is pointed outward and then you have this wall here. Once you slide your piece up against the wall, the back corner of your piece is gonna touch, but the front isn't gonna touch. So there's gonna be a space that's left and that space can be exaggerated, more open and cl closer together as they go down the wall. So what we do is we cut the back off so that it creates a 45 degree angle. And when we slide the piece in, the front touches the wall before the back ever touches the wall. And what it does is it creates this like seamless look up and up the wall to make it look like the wall is exactly 90, 90 degrees square. So on the table saw, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the blade, shift it to 90 degrees. And I'm just gonna cut enough where I create a point at one end of the, the, the lumber, right? And then from that point, we'll stain it, plane it, do what we need to do and then we'll have our final measurements. All right, so when we're cutting that beveled angle on the two pieces, basically those two corner pieces, a tool that I use is this tool called a Max, uh, Max Switch Featherboard. And essentially what it does is it acts like your fingers, but instead of you having your fingers so close to the blade, it has these magnets. So when you twist this to turn it on, it initiates the magnets onto uh, the, the cast iron tabletop and then it basically pushes the piece of wood against the fence. So as you're sliding it through, it's not wonky and creating like angles. I'm not asking you, it's just sawdust, whatever. <laughs> but uh, so we're gonna go ahead and insert this or place this onto the table saw. And then I'm gonna show you guys how, you know, we cut those angles um, so that it lines up against the wall.
All right, so as you can see, we created a, a beveled edge. You don't have to worry too much about this right here because that won't actually interfere with the edge. As long as you got that straight line going up, you're pretty much good to go. So essentially, when it's, just imagine this being like the corner of a wall. So when we slide this piece on, you see how that back edge sticks up and just the front is what touches the wall. So that's what we're going for when placing these um, on the wall, so. All right, so what we're doing right now, Sam is sanding the boards. And then on this table, like I mentioned before, having the two tables to work different uh, parts of the project, I'm gonna go ahead and start staining the pieces. So the stain that we're gonna use, we're gonna use like a water-based golden oak stain. This matches the floor of the client's house. Um, we use a water base because it is a fast drying. And since we're not really gonna be putting things on it, um, we don't have to use like an oil base. I prefer to use this over oil base because it's easier to clean up off your hands, off surfaces, you can use water and clean it down. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put some gloves on, kind of mask myself up so I'm protected. And then uh, we'll get started. couple things when painting a wall so we, we're painting a wall black right now before we put the slats on the wall a um, few things you'll want to have when painting some type of spackle just to fill like the little holes that you might run across in your walls painters tape the real professional painters they don't necessarily use this but I don't trust my hand and I'd rather put the tape up there so I don't have to do like touch up work later frog tape this works very well to cut those seams we don't really need to worry about it over there because we're going to be putting slats up on the wall on that side and up on the wall on that side and kind of flowing it down the rest of the wall and then of course your paint what we're using here is duration from sharon williams all right so over here what we're doing is basically just going down a row installing the slats but what we use is this one inch spacer to get the exact spacing that we need. There's nothing fancy about this. It's literally just a one inch piece of block that we cut off from our scraps. And essentially what we're gonna do is line this one, place this up right up against the previous piece. We're gonna take our slat, line it up right on top. And we're gonna use the baseboard as support down below so that we can um, basically hold the piece up and we're not having to like forcefully hold it up and then you're we're literally just nailing it from the sides and that's a quick tip so like if you want a clean look of having these up here without any type of holes on the front i always recommend nailing from the sides and just going at like a 45 degree angle it will go into the wall we're using one and a half inch brad nail so it'll go into the wall and brad nailing it from the sides creates like this hook where it kind of hooks into the wall. So there's like, we can't pull these off the wall even if we want to. And we don't use glue behind them because it kind of creates additional depth behind it. So we just brad nail it from the sides on either ends. And then we fill those holes with a uh, putty, a wood filler, so that it kind of, it, it mimics that same color. And aesthetically it just looks way better than brad nailing it from the front. So I'm just gonna go down the line and basically brad nail um, this piece of the wall. And I space it out about 12 to 15 inches um, between each nail punch. That way we're not filling too many holes, but it's as secure as possible.
All right, so we finished it up. This is the final product. Um, slat wall, so just kind of a rundown. You know, we picked up these um, wooden trim pieces there, initially three quarters of an inch. We planed them down to 10 sixteenths of an inch to match the baseboards down at the bottom. So if you see down here, each piece is flush with the baseboard. So we plane them down to 10 sixteenths. Um, then we stained them a golden oak. Some pieces came out a little bit darker than others simply because of the density, the porousness of each piece of wood. Um, and then from there, you know, we painted the wall black. Um, I recommend doing that first before putting the slats on the wall because it's just easier. You don't have to worry about painting all the pieces of wood. So we painted two coats black with the Sherwin William duration paint. Um, and then we installed all of the slats. We used a nail gun, 18 gauge nail gun. We brad nailed everything from the sides so that you wouldn't see any of the holes directly on each slat. Um, and we kind of just spaced everything out about an inch spacing so that it was uniform. The client wanted something that was closer together than that one and a half inch spacing. So we went with one inch. Um, and yeah, ultimately this is the final product. It looks amazing in my opinion. I like the color. Um, this kind of resembles like a walnut complexion and it matches the floors. It's not the exact color, but the two-tone variation you know, complements each other. Not to mention they have an earthy tone going on in the room with like plants and things of that nature. So this is gonna look really nice together. Um, but ultimately, this is a final product. It's a nail with wood woodwork. If you guys have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, follow the, uh, the page, follow us on all social medias. And yeah, just let us know what you wanna see next. See ya.